This is the second main quest for the summer update 2022, the primal ordeal. The other main quest is within the tides, which I have covered partly on this video. Keep in mind that you must complete the quest beforehand as there is one mission that will require an item that's only obtainable by finishing within the tides. Also, the objective from this quest is to unlock access to the magma bubble, the main boss from the quest that drops the new best in the slot items as well as the add-on items for the firefighter outfit that you also get in this quest. And by defeating magma bubble, you can start to do the primal menace, which is a secondary boss that unlocks different levels of the hazard system. By having more hazards, all the monsters in here will increase their base damage and get higher chances of dodging attacks, but also will grant more loot, experience, and higher chances of summoning in the Plunder Patriarch, which is a monster that will drop at least one of the new best in slot items. But more on that later. Let's start with how to do this quest. First of all, head to the Ivory Towers in Edron and find the non-recruiter and say hi join. Then you will be able to travel to non Bromla from the Kasordun and Kormaja Steamboats. This is technically all you need to access the new high level areas, and the quest itself is to get access to the bosses. To start, find no miner and say hi challenger. Your first mission will be to buy a candy lure from Gnome Fury, and then you will have to use the candy on the 7 ferries across Gnome Prona, 3 of them on the underground area which is safe from monsters that you access through the wagons under Gnome Fury. Go on each of them and then head towards the ferry and use the candy on them. As for the other 4, they are up the stairs inside the new high level areas. This can be done with a party of 6 hunters with 2 druids, as long as done slowly, but the full quest cannot be completed at those levels, at least I don't think it's possible to get high hazard levels, however, I will say it's still worth doing to unlock access to magma bubble and farm that boss daily. So moving on, the first one on the left wagon take the stairs into the monster graveyard. These monsters do mostly earth, physical and fire damage. Keep in mind that all of these spawns have creatures that will target the lowest HP player, often going for the druids. And overall, if not careful, you can lure way too many monsters, but as long as you go slowly to get the quest done, then it should be fine. And most of the fairies are close to the entrance of the spawns, so it's not necessary to go into deep. The first one will be just a bit to the southeast of the first stairs around here. Use the candy on her, and then go back to the middle wagon into the crystal enigma. The fairy here is a bit northeast from the stairs. Be careful with the monsters in here as they have a chance to apply fear, which will make you lose control of your character and run in the opposite direction, although the chance of happening is small. Next up, take the right wagon to the sparkling pools. There will be two fairies here, but they will be further into the spawn compared to the others. Take the first stairs and follow the path until here and you will find the fairy. Then you can take the same path backwards where you came from or follow the path towards the stairs by the middle. I do not recommend to start from the middle even though it's closer because that first pull up the stairs tends to be hard to do. Once you're back to the underground, take the wagons or walk all the way southeast to the third entrance to the spawn. This time the ferry will be straight north and this is also the location of the portal to the magma bubble. Once you're done with all 7 ferries, report back to non miner once again saying hi challenger. Then you will be sent to do a few tasks that are preparation to the mechanics of the magma bubble. And all of these can be solo or with a theme. First one is through the right wagon and by the southeast of the underground. For this one, you must avoid getting hit by the raging monsters AoE and from the sulfur menace. They don't do damage, but getting hit by the raging monsters sends you backwards and gets you drunk. There will also be stones blocking your path that can be killed, and before they respawn, a step on top of their square and that will make them respawn south of it, making the running easier. Your goal is to reach the end and step on the blue fire to get a charge. Then make your way back to the start and click on the machine there to deposit the fire charge. This must be done 3 times and if you get hit by the AOE of the monsters on the way back, you will lose the charge. Once you have brought back 3 charges, you are done. Go back and report to no miner by saying hi challenger. To report and receive the next task, take the right wagon and head a bit southwest. Similar to the previous task, your mission here is to reach the end. This time by not getting hit by the fire, which will be starting as ash, then a small fire and lastly a big fire fill. You can walk on the ash or the small fire, but the big fire fill will set you back to the beginning. Each player needs to get to the end individually, and once there your quest log will get updated, and for the way back it's safe to step on the fire to get back faster. Go back to non-manor and say hi challenger. Next up, again take the right wagon 
and this time all the way southeast you will find the teleport. For this task, you need to click on the machine by the star and it will give you 30 charges of protective layer. Then go east and follow the fire to find the crystals at the end. Each second inside the fire will remove one charge and you must keep track of it and make sure to have enough charges to go back. If you don't have any, then each second will drain 50% of your max HP. With a team, you can easily get 2 crystals with the 30 charges, but you can also just go back to the entrance to get more at any time. After the 3 crystals are dead, your mission is complete. Go back and report. For the next one, you need to go to Marapur and get an artifact from the Naginaga. Look at it southeast of where Timira is. Say hi, artifact yes. As long as you have fully completed the Within the Tides quest, she will give it to you, and then you just go back and report the mission. The last task is locating the left wagon to the southeast. There will be 4 crystals changing from green to red randomly and a lava puddle spawning in the middle. Killing it will turn into a charged flame and using that on a green crystal will leave a blue fire filled next to it. Step on it to receive one charge and take that charge south to the crystal plate by stepping on it. This must be done 10 times in total by anyone inside the room and it will count for everyone. Report the mission and now you will have access to the magma bubble. Take the right wagon and go full southeast by walking or taking the wagons inside. The boss is located to the north of the stairs and the monsters in here do mostly energy damage to the shooters and mainly physical to the EK. I recommend to kill your way in every time, since me and my team have gotten two plunder patriarchs by clearing our way in and out. For the boss fight, I highly recommend to have 5 players and 2 druids. The damage on the last two phases is very high on the EK and even though me and my team had done it with 4 people, it was very hard despite our levels. For this boss, you will have to do similar mechanics as to what you have done on the task before. There will be crystals around the middle alternating between green and red and you must use a charged flame on the green crystal. To get those charged flames, you need to get the end of the days under half HP. When you do that, they will heal back to full and summon around 10 lava creatures. Killing those lava creatures is what drops the charred flames. It used to be possible to get some flames from attack turns, so walking them over fields was beneficial, but that's not possible anymore, so just focus on killing them before they disappear, which can happen sometimes. I recommend to have the EK keep the end of the days on him all the time and just run around the south area while everyone else focuses on running around and killing the lava creatures and using the flames on the crystals to get their protective layers up. And just like during the task, the objective is to kill the 3 crystals to the sides. With over 30 charges, 2 people can kill 1 crystal, and that's what we have found to be the best way to go. Another strategy is to keep 1 or 2 druids with the EK and 2 or 3 people focus on killing the crystals. Just make sure to always have enough protected layer to go back to the center, since this time the fire will do a third of your HP per turn if you don't have any charges. Overall, it takes a few rounds of lava creatures to get the charges and it's recommended to be careful and don't stack round of lavas at a time by single targeting down to half HP one of the end of days at a time. Once done with the 3 crystals, the next phase will start after a few seconds. Have the shooters go south and the night a bit south from the middle as well. This time, 6 end of days will spawn, 3 of them towards the south area and 3 to the north. By having the EK near the south where they spawn, it increases the chances of all 6 going straight for the EK. The damage from all 6 is very high and is manageable with 2 druids and the sorcerer debuff as well as some UHs here and there. But if you are missing heals, then it can easily kill a knight. I'd like to stay south of the middle crystal to at least have one less end of the days facing me directly to avoid getting hit by one wave. This also helps to make at least one side safe for the mages to wave, but honestly even that is risky, and it's safer to just use avalanches and fully heal the knight. After killing all 6, the magma bubble will spawn by the south and it won't move at all. On this phase, use uses these to kill it, but be careful with its summons since they can do high combos, and additionally their fire beam can heal the boss. So if they are in front of the boss, the EK needs to move them. But the best way to deal with the summons is to lure them north and then run back south. If done correctly, they should stay off the screen and don't come back, and that's pretty much all there is for this boss. Report to no miner and you will get the firefighter off it but also access to the Primal Menace. I am currently at 6 hazards for that boss, and will make a separate video for it when I get to level 12, as that is when you get a guaranteed item from the quest. That's all I got for now, thank you for watching, and consider subscribing to not miss out on the follow up to the Primal Menace, and a special thanks to Tuna Hero, Thor the Slasher, and Nightstar for their support to the channel.